A good husband always forgives his wife when he's wrong. Let's talk about it. If you're married and you haven't taken Gary Chapman's five love languages quiz yet, you should. It's available online, but I'll give you a brief overview of them in the meantime. The first is words of affirmation. For those who feel most loved through words of affirmation language, hearing I love you is simply a necessity. Other thoughtful, specific compliments are where the love is really felt. On the other hand, negative or insulting comments cut really deep and won't be easily forgiven. The second love language is quality time. Quality time is all about giving the other person your undivided attention. Unlike the words of affirmation language, talk is cheap, and being your spouse's main focus leads quality timers to a feeling of comfort and satisfaction. Distractions, postponed dates, or failure to listen can be especially hurtful to these individuals. Being there for them is cru crucial. The third is receiving gifts. Dr. Chapman says for some people, what makes them feel most loved is to receive a tangible, physical gift. This doesn't necessarily mean the person is materialistic, but a meaningful or thoughtful present goes a long ways. Number four is acts of service. For these people, actions speak louder than words. People who speak the language of service want their partner to recognize that their life is rough and help them out in any way possible. People who crave acts of service struggle, struggle with broken promises, they struggle with laziness, and they have very little tolerance for people who make more work for them. If you're not willing to show your appreciation by doing them a time-consuming favor, favor, you're commu communicating to them that you don't value them. Number five is physical touch. If your top love language is physical touch, nothing makes you feel better than physical touch with the people you care most about. And it doesn't mean you're a pervert. This isn't all about the bedroom. Everyday physical connections like hand-holding, hugging, or any type of reaffirming physical contact is really appreciated. And just because you or your partner favor a particular love language doesn't mean you should stop expressing the other love languages. Even though we tend to favor one la language more than the others, we usually enjoy most of the other ones too. If you have unexplained tension in your relationship, there is a good chance that you're not loving your partner in the right way. You may be working yourself to death, showing him or her your love, but if you're not speaking their language, you're banging your head against the wall. Because usually, not always, People are prone to show love in the ways that they, but they prefer to receive it, not in the way their partner likes to receive it. And if you're not loving your partner in the way that will best speak to them, there's a chance that they will start to look for love in other places. So stop here and answer the first three questions, then push play again. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Genesis 2, 23 and 24 says, At last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman, because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. The Trinity is a beautiful picture of how we are to relate to each other in marriage. Just as God is three person and one being, a husband and wife are one being. Marriage represents an entire melding of two people, a seamless union, emotionally, physically, financially, sexually. Even though you have separate bodies, you are united as one spiritually. So as you spiritually because, become one, as you know more and more about each other, as you learn how to better love someone, you more and more reflect the image of God in you. Let's get that intimacy level up. So we're going to do a little exercise. Grab a piece of paper, write answers to the following four questions, then give that piece of paper to your spouse. 
Then spend the next week trying your hardest to fulfill those requests for your spouse, even if you don't think you're, they're legitimate. When communication is open and honest, intimacy increases. I'll see you Sunday in church.